The reason why I want him to lead us is so that we will not stumble. There are pits in the wilderness. There are rocky places in the wilderness. There are challenges in the wilderness. There are enemies, there are Malachites there in the wilderness, the Moabites, people of Balaam and Balak in the wilderness. That's why we're saying, on the one hand, lead us not into temptation. On the other hand, deliver us. If Balaam shows up in company of Balak, deliver us from their hand. If the Moabites and the Malachites shall deliver us from evil, then in verse 14, as if this goes down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord caused him to rest. So, didst thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name that's why it's important for us as we look at this prayer the lord actually was telling us and cautioning us against self-confidence against overconfidence as he taught the people to pray this way he knows that the best of his disciples and the greatest of the kingdom citizens will need divine help and strength to overcome temptation and to overcome all evil. And that's the reason why he's teaching us this prayer and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He knows how weak the flesh is, even when the spirit is willing. He knows how determined the evil one is to defeat and to destroy the believers through temptation. So he teaches us to pray that God will prevent us and protect us from the past and the power of temptation. Yet, we live. In the world which is under the influence, under the control of the evil one. A world of evil workers. A world that is totally evil, completely evil. Our safety and security is in our God. Who has all the power to keep us, to deliver us from evil. You know he's willing. And you know he's able to deliver us from all evil. And end the doxology. That is the end of the prayer. Gives us the assurance that yes, he will answer prayer and he will answer your prayer. And then we're told in that, uh, that's Matthew now, chapter 6, the latter part of that verse 13. We're praying and we're saying, oh Lord, do this for us, do this for us. How do you have the assurance that you will do it or that he's able to do it? For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We divide the message, the Bible study tonight to three parts. Number one, praying to escape and overcome temptations. Praying to escape and overcome temptations. Number two, protection from the evil and oppressive tempter. Protection from the evil and oppressive tempter. Number three, preeminence, the preeminence of the eternal one and its overall triumph. We come to number one. Pray to escape and overcome temptation. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 6, we're looking at verse 13. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. What a prayer. A prayer you ought to pray. A prayer every one of us has to pray. Lead us not into temptation. The question is, what's temptation? It's Satan's attempt through men and through circumstances to entice us and to draw us away into sin, into disobedience, into rebellion, into evil. Temptation is Satan's attempt. Satan's endeavor, Satan's activity, Satan's enticement to draw us into sin. It's just his enticement. He'll try, but he'll not win. I said he'll not get you. Yeah. Temptation is Satan's enticement to draw us away from God into sin into disobedience, into rebellion, into evil. Let's look at that. In Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 2. You're following through on the description of temptation, the definition of temptation, the enticement of the devil, the activity of the devil 
in trying to draw us away, away from the family of God, away from the center of the will of God, wanting to draw us away into sin, into disobedience, into rebellion, into evil. Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 2. Be forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he had to word hunger. And the devil said unto him, If that be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. He wanted to draw Jesus Christ away from obedience to the Father unto obeying the devil. And Jesus answered, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. That's what the devil does. I'll show you some, uh, some things that appear interesting and attractive in the world. But it's all shallow. It's all counterfeit. So it can draw you away. Draw your mind away from the center of the worship of the Lord. And draw you after himself. And then we're told, and the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee. And the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And unto whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. That's the deception of the devil. The enticement of the devil. He wanted to lure Jesus Christ away from following after the Heavenly Father and then go into sin, into disobedience, into rebellion, into iniquity, into evil. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him into Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time that thou should have put against a stone. And Jesus answered said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season, will overcome. Because Jesus overcame. You see what the devil does? He uses some things of this world to entice us so he can draw us away after himself. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. They that will be rich. They that want to be rich by force very quickly. And they feel prosperity is number one thing. They make prosperity, wealth, an idol. Temptation will come through that. The devil is watching. If he knows that this is what is uppermost in your heart, he will use that to draw you away from the Lord. They that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which draw men in destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. First Thessalonians chapter 3, I'm reading verse 5. First Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 5 For this cause when I could no longer forbear I sent you know your faith Lest by some means the tempter I tempted you Lest by some means the tempter uh, so, attempt, I tempted you And our labor be in vain When you yield to temptation The labor of the preachers will be in vain when you yield to temptation, the labor that you have labored be before in the past will be in vain. Your backslide and you are no more in the Lord. That's why the Lord is saying, don't yield to temptation. And sometimes Satan uses some other things to draw people away, away from the Lord. And you need to know the devices of the enemy, the wiles of the enemy. They plan the strategy of the enemy so that the enemy will not catch you and it will not catch you. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. Even him who's coming is after the walking of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. 
lying wonders. That's how he catches some people. They're looking for signs and wonders. They do not understand your salvation is greater than signs and wonders. Holiness is greater than signs and wonders. Stability, steadfastness in the kingdom of God is greater than signs and wonders. There are some people that will miss the study of the word. Because now they, all they're looking for is prayer, 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 signs, wonders, healing, deliverance. And the devil comes that way, knows that's what we have made an idol. And he says, even him who's coming is after the walking of Satan. With all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. They receive not the love of the truth. They say, what am I doing with doctrine? What am I doing with the truth? What am I doing with teaching? What am I doing with Bible study? I'm looking for healing. Because they receive not the love of the truth. That they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned. Who believe not the truth. But have pleasure in unrighteousness. They have pleasure in unrighteousness. You see what the devil does? If he knows that this is what you are looking for. That salvation is no more important in your heart. That holiness is no more important in your heart. That sanctification is no more the central pursuit of your life. Then, you know, all you're looking for is not signs and wonders. It will show you some signs, some lying wonders. And it is to tempt you to draw you away and entice you away from the very center of the worship of the Lord into sin, into disobedience, into rebellion, into iniquity, and into evil. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, I'm trying to explain to you what temptation is and how the devil uses substance or circumstance or whatever to lure people away, away from the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13, for such are false apostles. He uses false apostles to, to give you some false promises and to give you some false kind of assurance and to say, I'll pray for you, I'll do this for you. But such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. You know what he does sometimes? He even he provokes people to do evil things. They are just living their lives and following the Lord. And then Satan, he wants you to draw them away to evil. He provokes them to do something bad, something evil. So he can draw them away into sin, into disobedience, into rebellion, into evil, into iniquity. First Chronicles chapter 21. First Chronicles chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go number Israel from Beersheba, even to Dan, and bring the number of them to me, that I may know it. And Joab answered, The Lord make these people a hundred times so many more as they be. But my Lord the King, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then does my Lord require this sin? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? But you know, when the devil actually is, uh, you know, pumping that thing to the mind of anybody and uh, the tension becomes very, very strong. Many people just have told you what to do. That's what I'm going to do. Don't counsel me. I don't need any advice. Satan provoked David that he will do something the Lord did not want him to do. And Job recognized that. And Job said, why will my Lord do such a thing like this? It will be a trespass to Israel. And it says, nevertheless, in verse 4, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Don't counsel me. Don't talk to me. Don't advise me. Don't tell me not to do it. I must do it. Satan provoked him. 
And then we're told, Job went and departed. He departed and went through all Israel and came to Jerusalem. Verse 7, And God was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. God was displeased. Therefore, it's much Israel. And the Lord is telling us the temptation. After you are born again, you need to understand. You need to realize that Satan will try to draw you away. That's the reason why you are praying the prayer and you're saying, look at Matthew again, Matthew chapter 6, and we're looking at verse 13. There's a prayer we're praying. And lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. What a prayer we ought to pray. In fact, just before the Lord Jesus Christ left his own disciples, he told them they must pray against temptation. And he's telling us in the same way we ought to pray against temptation. Matthew chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 41. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Watch and pray that she enter not into temptation. Watch and pray. Don't only really watch, pray. Don't only pray, watch. Watch and pray when every time. Be very vigilant. Watch and pray that she enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but that's not in all. I'm determined not to backslide. That's not in all. I'm willing to serve the Lord till the end. That's not in all. My consecration is intact. That's not enough. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's why the Lord is telling us to pray. And thank God he moderates those temptations that come our way. And any temptation greater than we can bear will not come to us in Jesus' name. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13, There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you, permit you, allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. He'll make a way to escape. Yes, temptations are there. They are there in the world. But the Lord will give us the way of escape. I said he'll give us a way of escape. But you know, there's something we need to take care of. We must not be overconfident. Self-confident. Saying, Lord, don't worry about me. I can handle that. Don't worry about me. My consecration is so great, I cannot backslide. The Lord said, watch and pray. Don't be so sure about yourself. I don't tell stories. You know, last year, I got tempted. I overcame the story. The other time when I just became a Christian, the yeah, temptation came, and those people, they want to, to, to make me stumble. I, I stood. The story, don't tell the story. When the Lord said, watch and pray, then go and watch and go and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. Let's see uh, this uh, a brother, a senior brother, actually, Apostle Peter. In uh, Luke chapter 21, Luke chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Simon, Simon, Satan has seen your quality, your character, your charisma, your skill, your ability, your strength, your devotion, your determination to consecrate everything to me. And Satan is jealous. Of all the skill, ability, and everything you've got. And he wants to sift everything and get everything to himself. Therefore, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. He doesn't want you to belong to me. He wants to get you for himself, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, don't worry about me. Overconfidence. Lord, are you praying for me? Don't you understand? I've made up my mind. I've resolved. I want to serve you. And no matter who backslides, and no matter who goes away, I am going to stand. Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. 